Hello and welcome back to the channel. Last lecture we have seen how we can implement a reliable data solution for your Apache Spark using databases and the data lakes. But in this lecture, let's talk about the lake houses, which is like a next generation of storage solution for your Apache Spark. So without further any ado, let's get into it. So in the previous lecture, we have seen all about the different storage solutions, which was database and the data lake. So we have discussed in there what are data lake and databases, what are the benefits as well as the cons. So that leads us to the next step in the evolution of storage solution, which is nothing but the lake house. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about what are lake houses, how it solves the issue of using data lakes as well as the databases and their different types. So without further any ado, let's get into it. So the lake house is like a new paradigm which combines the best elements of the data lakes and the data warehouses for the OLAP workloads. So OLAP which we have seen in the last lecture, it, it is used for the analytics purposes and when you are submitting complex queries, OLAP will make much more sense than the OLTP. So that you need to keep in mind. So these lake houses are like enabled by new system which provides data management features which are similar to databases. And also it is like cost effective as well as the scalable storage. And they provide some of the features that I have given here. The first is like a transaction support. So since it's acid compliant, it will be like a step ahead of the data lake which is not an acid compliant solution. So it is useful for keeping the accurate results in your lake houses. Then we have the schema enforcement and the governance. So these lake houses will prevent data with incorrect schema which is being inserted into the table. And whenever needed, the table schema can be explicitly evolved for accommodating the ever changing data. Because in today's era, the data keeps changing. We will be having different new attributes to be added in the system and if we are using databases, it is a heck of a task for data administrator to maintain all this and accommodate all these changes. So lake houses will give you that flexibility to evolve your schema over time. So and the system should be able to reason about data integrity and it should have the robust governance as well as the auditing mechanisms. And also this supports like diverse data types in open formats. So unlike the databases, lake houses can store, also they analyze and access all types of data which are needed for many new data applications. So it should be like structured, semi-structured or unstructured. So it handles all types of data. And it also enables wide variety of tools to access it directly and very efficiently. And the data must be stored in open formats with standardized APIs for reading and writing them. It also supports the diverse workloads. So what it means is it is powered by a variety of tool for reading data using open APIs as well as the lake houses as well as the workloads for operating on the data in single repository. So breaking down the isolated data silos which is like multiple repositories for different categories of the data. It will enable developers for more easy build and very diverse and complex data solution. And it will go from a traditional SQL and to the streaming analytics and also the machine learning. So it will handle like a diverse workloads, which is like a big requirement for today's big data applications. Then we have the support for upsets as well as the deletes. So these complex use cases like the changed data capture, which is known as CDC, as well as the slowly changing dimensions, which is also known as SDC. So this operation will require data in the table to be continuously updated and lake houses will allow data to be concurrently deleted as well as updated with transactional guarantees. So that will keep lake houses in upfront and they will give you like the integrity of the databases as well as the scalability of the data lake. So that's why lake houses are pretty popular choice nowadays. And it also provides data governance. So it provides like tools which you can reason about data integrity as well as the auditing purpose so that all the data will change for co policy compliance. So currently there are like few open source systems like Apache Hoodie as well as Apache Iceberg and the Delta Lake. 
So there, this can be used for, for building the lake houses. And all these projects have a similar architecture which is inspired by the well-known database principles. So they are all like open data storage formats that has some capabilities. First one is like it should store large amount of data in structured file formats on scalable file systems because scalability is the big plus in today's era as well as it will maintain a transaction log for recording a timeline of atomic changes to the data. It also uses the logs to define versions of table data and it will provide us the snapshot isolation which guarantees between readers as well as the writers. And also it supports like reading and writing to tables using Apache Spark. So that's why these available lake houses make more sense than either data warehouses as well as the data lake. So let's talk about these solutions one by one. So like the first one is Apache Hoodie. So this Apache Hoodie is built by Uber Engineering. And it is like acronym for Hadoop Update, Delete and Incremental. It makes more sense, right? So it is like a data storage format which is designed for incremental upsurge as well as deletes over the key value style of data. So key value means like a JSON format where the data is stored in a key value pair. As well as you may ask like what is absurd actually. So absurd is nothing but a combination of update as well as insert. So if we have like a row which is already present into the system but it is having some updated values. So this will go for update. And if we we have we got like completely new record then it will go into the insert mode. So it is like a combination of update and insert. So this data is like stored as a combination of columnar format which we have seen in the parquet format where the data is stored in the columnar format for better reading performance. And it also has like row based format like Avro files for example. And besides they have some of the features that I have given here. So the first one is like upsetting with fast as well as the pluggable indexing. So the upset operations are very fast as well as it has like atomic publishing of data with a rollback support because rollback is very important when your workloads are getting failed. So it will roll back that transaction to maintain the integrity in your system. It also has like reading the incremental changes to the table. So that is very important. It also has like save points for maintaining the data recovery into your system as well as it has like file size and the layout management and the async compaction of row and the columnar data. So these are like some of the features of Apache Hoodie. And we also have like Apache Iceberg which is pretty similar to this and it has like overlapping features as well. So let's discuss about that now. So this Apache Iceberg is originally built by Netflix. So everyone knows about the Netflix. It is like the biggest streaming platform in the world right now. So this Apache Iceberg is like another open storage format and it is meant to use for huge data set where the data is coming at a higher volume. But however, unlike Hoodie, which like focuses on the upsetting key value data, this iceberg will focus more on the general purpose data storage, which can scale to like petabytes in a single table and has schema evolution properties. So specifically, it will provide this following properties, which I have given here. The first one being the schema evolution, which is like a must priority in today's agile development. So schema evolution like means by adding, you should be able to add like and drop update as well as rename or reorder the columns as well as the fields and also you should be implementing the nested structures. So that is very important. Then it should have like hidden partitioning which is like under the covers which creates the partition values for rows in the table. That is very important. Also it should have like partition evolution. So where there, there is like automatic perform of a metadata operation for updating the table layout as the data volume changes. So as per the data volume changes, it will like updates the table layout to maintain the performance and optimizations in your system. And it also should have like time travel. So time travel will allow us for a certain query to get a specific table snapshot using the ID or by the timestamp. This is very important. 
and also it should have the rollback for previous versions for correcting correcting the errors and also it should have like serializable isolation and even between the multiple concurrent writes that is very important and these are some of the features of apache iceberg so this is also like pretty similar to the apache hoodie but it has like some advantages over it like the schema evolution for example and also we have the delta lake that we will talk about now so here comes the another lake house solution which you can build using the delta lake so it is also like a open source project which is hosted by the linux foundation and it is like built by the original creators of apache spa so it is like a open data storage format which will provide us like the transactional guarantees like acid compliance and it will enable the schema enforcement and the evolution this is a big pro and it also provides like several other very interesting features that i have given here so it has like capability for streaming reading so which means that it will provide us like streaming reading from and writing to tables using the structured streaming sources as well as the sync it is a big pro so if you are dealing with the streaming data delta lake could make more sense than other lake house solution out there it also has like update delete and the merge operation so merge will be used for upsets and also it will provide us even in the java scala or the python apis that is a big pro for every developers out there it also has like schema evolution either by explicitly altering the table schema or by implicitly merging a data frame schema to the tables during the data frame write it is a big pro so in fact the merge operation in the delta lake will support like advanced syntax conditional operations like update insert as well as delete and like updating all columns together it also has like time travel which we have seen earlier so this time travel will allow again for you to query a specific table snapshot by id or by the timestamp it also has the rollback which is similar to apache iceberg which keeps the previous version for correcting the errors and also it has like serializable isolation between the multiple concurrent writes and it does that over any sql batch or the streaming operation so it is a big pro so if you are having like streaming solution where you need to read and write the streaming data then delta lake will make more sense as your storage solution so this was all about the what is a lake houses and how we can implement it with different services out there so i hope you like this lecture and now let's take a deep dive into the machine learning library which is ml lib which is very interesting and let's do some hands on as well to get you clear understanding so i'll see you in the next lecture I hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching